Well, engineers are rigging explosives to refloat the dolly, which has been stuck in the Patapsco River since March when it struck the key bridge. They're hoping this will allow more maritime traffic into the port of Baltimore. Amy Kawada on your corner this Friday morning with a closer look at the operation and what to expect if you live nearby. Amy, good morning. Hey, Tim Cena, good morning. Well, in order to refloat the dolly, the large section of steel from the bridge that currently sits on top of the ship must be removed through a process called precision cutting. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers says that these efforts are expected to happen as early as this weekend, but it all depends on multiple environmental and operational factors. Now, take a look at your screen here. The Unified Command released this video showing how the demolition might look using small charges to split the portion of the collapsed bridge on the ship's bow into smaller, more manageable sections. Officials stress this is the safest and swiftest way to remove the thousands of tons of wreckage pinning the massive ship as crews work to open the federal channel. Still, they're urging people to maintain a safe distance from the operation and highly discourage spectating. A 2,000 foot safety zone has been established where hearing protection is required. Now, from a distance, neighbors, you may hear something that sounds like fireworks. Or loud thunder and likely see puffs of smoke in the air during the demolition. Something to also note recreational boaters will have access to move through the bridge safety zone on Sunday. Outbound transits will be allowed from 3 to 4 p.m., and inbound transits will be from 4 to 5 p.m. However, those times are subject to change. Now, since the collapse, four temporary channels have opened to allow vessels to travel through the port. The main 50 foot deep channel is still set to be reopened by the end. Of this month. For now, pointing live, I'm Amy Kawada for WJZ. Amy, thank you. And the loss of the bridge has made rush hour traffic much worse in the harbor and the uh, McHenry tunnels. The MDTA is now working on a plan to help ease congestion. Starting Monday, the middle toll lanes will be closed on the northbound side of the harbor tunnel, and that's meant to make merging easier and quicker. MDTA also plans to open a ramp on the Baltimore side of the, the Baltimore County side of the uh, bridge, allowing for that traffic on 695 on the uh, loop there. To exit to Broning Highway. Now, that ramp will be open toll free through the end of this month. Last night, the Maryland Chamber of Commerce honored many of the brave people who showed up and saved lives early in the morning on Tuesday, March 26. That included city firefighters, police officers, MDTA officers, and other first responders as well who sprung into action after the Key Bridge collapse. Baltimore City EMT and rescue swimmer Andrew Vernon was one of them. He told WJZ he remembers the moment he got the call to respond and that nothing prepared him for the mission that lied ahead. Just a surreal feeling that you're, uh, you're swimming over top the bridge now that, that used to be up. We could see the car right, right below the surface of the water with the lights flashing, and um, that's what we wanted to go to first. The other heroes that morning were the eight construction workers who were filling potholes on the bridge so that we could all have better roads. Six of those men died in a memorial, and four Armistead, Armistead still stands in their honor. And we want to remind you that WJZ and the United Way of Central Maryland are still trying to help those impacted by this tragedy. To learn how you can help us, scan this QR code right here on your screen or head to WJZ.com.